Coming up next, 10 careers that don't require a degree and pay pretty well. Plus, four questions to help you start to uncover your why. We'll take your calls and your chats, and it all starts right now. Coming to you live from Ramsey Studios in Nashville, I am Ken. Thrilled to have you with us. This is a conversation about who you are, what you were created to do, where you want to do it, and then how you get there. It's about your purpose, and that is important. It's the most important thing for every human being to really answer that question, why am I here? Let me give you a hint. You are here to fill a unique role. You are needed and you must do it. Now, we're going to talk about your role at work. You have your role in your personal life, but your role at work, it's not about you. It's about the gifts that you've been given and how you can use those gifts to do work that creates a result that matters deeply to you because you see the impact it has. It's not an, a crazy idea. It's not a new idea, but that's what we're focused on. And you've got to get clear on what that role is. And then when you get clear on what that role is, now we can see in the marketplace multiple ways to fill the role in different jobs, different career paths. takes a lot of pressure off. You're not choosing just one thing. It doesn't need to be this stress-filled decision. It needs to be marked by enthusiasm because you know there are so many ways to fulfill your role and you can continue to grow and you stay in that role and you can evolve. So that's what we're about here. 844-747-2577. 844-747-2577. That's the number to get in. Madison is standing by right now. So if you're watching live at 11 Central, 12 Eastern, there she is. She's got the Georgia Red on today. Uh, I will tell you that Madison is very excited about college football. Um, There she is. She's pumped up today. She's very excited. The SEC released her schedule last night, and she is hoping for a full season. If if she doesn't get that, um, we are going to be watching her closely, watching her closely to make sure that she makes it through the fall. I don't know what you would do without college football. It will be a very trying time. Yeah. I will not be as nice of a phone screener. No question about it. So for all of you who want to be handled gently and kindly as she does now, pray for football and uh, we'll be able to keep serving you. If not, we'll have to put her on the bench, Nathan. We'll just have to uh, get somebody else in there until she recovers from the shocking disappointment of not having football. So there it is. Fun stuff. Uh, So she is standing by 844-747-2577. You can also submit your question via the chat room right there next to the video window. comes right to my computer. We'll get to a few of those a little bit later. 10 jobs that don't require a bachelor's degree. Hello, we got your attention on that one. Some of you are going, hey, man, I don't want to go to school. (laughs) But it's not just about not going to school. How about does it allow you to perform that unique role that you have? Do you find that you're good at these type of jobs? That you love the work itself and you can see a result that matters to you? Let's see. Here they are. 10 jobs that don't require a bachelor's degree. And some of these could earn you $80,000 a year or more. One, radiologic and MRI technologists. Um, These are folks that are maintaining and operating technology like x-ray machines. The median salary here, $62,000 a year. Electrical and electronics engineering technicians. Um, This is... Electrical engineers, building, testing, repairing instruments like computers, medical devices, and communications equipment. Median salary, $65,000 per year. Aerospace engineering and operations technicians, $66,000 per year. These folks are operating and maintaining equipment used to develop, test, and produce aircraft and their operating systems. Diagnostic medical sonographers. Well, that's a mouthful. I think you should get more than $60,000 a year just because that's what you do. Sounds very impressive. Uh, But these are folks that operate and maintain imaging equipment and help physicians diagnose medical conditions. Median salary, $68,750 per year. Web developers, 
Web developers build client websites using coding. And the median salary there, $73,760 per year. Dental hygienists, uh, obviously you're helping clean the patient's teeth before the dentist comes in and does that unbelievably invasive gum check. My guy comes in, I've already been cleaned and they're all around the gums, a little sore and all that, comes in, got the old plastic gloves on and just pulls the mouth. Oh, in all kinds of stretchy positions. And uh, I appreciate the thoroughness, but man, sheesh. Uh, nuclear medicine technologists. Now, these are technologists that work with radioactive drugs, like those used to cure cancer. $77,000, $950 in median salary there. Nuclear technicians. Now, these are people working with physicists and engineers on nuclear energy production or research. Median salary, $82,000 per year. Radiation therapists, obviously administering radiation treatments to patients with cancer and other diseases. Median salary, $85,000 per year. And then air traffic controllers. Joe, you'll appreciate this. Joe is a pilot. Um, air traffic controllers monitor and direct the movement of aircraft. Median salary. You want to take a guess, Joe? You've seen the article. Yes, I have. Okay, never mind. $122,000 per year. And uh, my wife and I, we knew a couple who um, uh, the husband was an air traffic controller. I would just point out, very stressful. Very stressful job, but they make really good money. So there you go. 10 jobs that require that don't require a bachelor's degree and can earn you 80000 or more. Now, the reason I give you that list is this. In this economy, especially this gig economy, there's going to be more and more great career paths for people who do not have a college degree. Don't be discouraged. Get diligent. Do the research. We're going to keep bringing you articles like this to help you because there's always going to be room for talented people that do not require a degree. 844-747-2577 is the number. Let's go to Ocala, Florida. Bonnie is there. Bonnie, you're on the Ken Coleman Show. Thank you so much for taking my call, and God bless you for um, being used by God in this way. Thank you. How can um, I help? My, my question for you is, um, I need some help. I'm a little worried that my husband um, feels that my can cancer diagnosis has trapped him in an unfulfilling job. Oh, okay. Um, Let's what I mean by that is I'm a stay-at-home mom, so mm -hmm. he's the sole wage earner, mm -hmm. and uh, he definitely is unhappy in his career. I actually had him take your should I quit my job test, mm -hmm. and a couple questions in, he starts grumping that, oh, well, this whole thing is just designed to say you need to quit your job, which obviously it's not. No. Um, and I've, I've asked him, he's a social worker right now. And I've asked him if you could do any job, you know, and you would be guaranteed not to fail, what would you want to do? And he said, tech support. Yeah. But with that fear that, you know, Oh God forbid the cancer comes back and I have to go through chemo and everything again, you know, what's going to happen to our daughter. I have to stay in this horrible, unfulfilling job just for the amazing benefits because it's the state of Florida. So, mm -hmm. you know, I get it. Not great pay, but <laughs> yeah. great benefits. What does he make? Uh, we make less than $40,000 a year. Yeah. Well, um, I don't know if you were paying attention to the start of the show, um, but I went through 10 jobs that um, do not require a college degree and that make a minimum of $80,000 or somewhere can make you up to rather um, $80,000 a year. And uh, one, two, two of them are in the technology space. One was the electrical and electronics engineering technician. So that's a technical role. Um, that's a median salary of $65,000 a year. The other was web developers. And that's a broad usage when they say web developers. But the median salary is $73,000 a year. I just wonder if I had him on the phone and he wants to do tech support, if I said, all right, I want you to think about all the tech support jobs because he's got something in his mind. He's been thinking about it. And I said, okay, could you do that for the state of Florida? And so you move out of social work into technology work, helping support the state's technology systems. There's a whole bunch of them. And he had the state benefits, but he was doing something he loved and he was making more money. 
how would he feel about that? And he would just start chuckling because he would know I've painted him into a corner. So let's first look at what are the opportunities within state government? And then what are opportunities in the private sector and technology? Technology has not been hard hit by COVID and it does not require a college degree. So he doesn't have to go back to school. He may have to do some online training. He may have to do some certification programs, but he can get after that right now if he's got to go deliver pizza to pay for it. And so, Lord willing, you don't have a return to cancer. And But if the cancer comes back and you got to do chemo, if he's in a great job, whether it's government or private sector, he's making A, more money, but he still has great benefits, there's nothing to worry about. So he is not stuck. Yes. He is not stuck by your cancer. And I completely, his, his concern though is he has a bachelor's in psychology. So, well, I have a bachelor's in psychology. I have to stay in No, he doesn't. Social. That's no, the he only doesn't. thing I can do. No, he doesn't. <laughs> do you think, uh, let's just say I lined him up for a technology job today. Let's say he had the, he had the requirements. He went and did some online training, got the certification or whatever. Okay. And let's say a company interviews him and they go, oh, I see you got a psychology degree. Oh, I also see you were a social worker for a long time. Why the switch? Well, I really enjoyed social work, enjoyed it, but you know, I grew and evolved a little bit and I really fell in love with technology and, and so just made the switch. Do you think they care if he has a psychology degree or a computer science degree? Do you think they care? I think they would be impressed with his yeah. um, employment yeah. history rather than specifically what his degree was in. Of course they would. And let's just say that, that one of the options I threw out becomes the best option, that he stays in Florida state government but he moves out of social work into technology. He's got all these connections in state government and they know he's been a, a long time Florida state employee with good marks and great reputation. They don't care. I just told you that he doesn't have to have a technology degree to get technology work. So you have to show him the facts. By the way, I'll, I'll give you the article. Um, uh, Joe, tell me who published this article. CNBC. So here's the headline. These 10 jobs don't require a bachelor's degree. Type that in. Uh, just put in CNBC article. These 10 jobs don't require a bachelor's degree. Okay? And it was published August the 6th. So show him the article. You know, say, hey, look, I called Ken about this. Fact of the matter is, is that you're going to have to get qualified. But what does it take to get qualified? What does he need? What qualifications yeah. does he need? Once we answer that, Bonnie, now it's how much is that going to cost us? And you look at your budget and you go, how long is that going to take? And so now he knows. Yeah. That's <laughs> Pretty it's, simple. It's very, the, the outlook is great. It's just trying to, you know, ask him the questions that will make him think. It. <laughs> well, but, but you know what you need to do? Will he call me or is he just such a bad attitude about it? It's like, I'm not calling that guy. Uh, I don't even know who that guy oh, is. Oh, no, no. He would, he would be so embarrassed to know that I called you. <laughs> okay, well, we don't want to do that. <laughs> but you know what you need to do? You need to actually... Joe, what time will today's YouTube show be posted at my YouTube channel? I know it's live right now. When will it post? Oh, so it posts wow. instantly. Oh, thank you. Uh, so here's the deal. How about you just... Fast forward to the start of the call, which is about six or seven minutes in, and let him watch it. You're going to have to get over that. the... Well, I'm just telling you, I'm talking directly to him right now. So if he would be embarrassed and it's going to cause a fight, don't do it. But if he's going to be embarrassed, no, no, but no, he I wants... <laughs> well, then let him watch it. See, here's the deal. He's worried that if he leaves his job, you won't have the benefits to take care of you. He's a good man. He shouldn't be embarrassed. He's honorable. But you're asking me to help him see that he's not trapped, and I just did. All we've got to do is get qualified for the technology job that he wants and get the job, and if it's got the great benefits, whether state or private, then he's relieved. And now he's doing what he loves, and he's going to be able to take care of you. That would be the dream. That would that would be amazing. <laughs> but it's attainable. Because I, I I just want him to be you know yeah. I I don't like having him feel so miserable. Then tell coming him that. home from work. Tell I him, him that. Come home. Tell like, him. Man, it was a great day. Yeah, tell him that. Say so here's why I call Ken, and here's the deal. I'll help you. We'll do this together. I'll help you find the gigs. 
We'll figure out what the qualifications are. I'll do whatever. Right? We'll sell some stuff. I'll help you fund the qualification Absolutely. process. Let's get you there. I'm all in. That's all. This is. Absolutely. He just doesn't see a way, but he's not thinking about. What does it truly take to get qualified to do the work I want to do? Once he does that and he sees a path and you guys come up with a way to pay for it and then we got a timeline, then we get after it. And oh, by the way, let's Absolutely. just say, and again, I'm believing that you're cancer free, but let's just say that cancer does rear its nasty, ugly head up while you're in the get qualified process. Guess what? He hasn't left his job. So there's nothing to worry about. <sighs> This is true, yeah. He doesn't leave until he's got something to leave to. Therefore, there's no interruption in benefits. That's the point. Absolutely. You just got to show him. Please let him watch this call. And what is his name? Mark. Hey, Mark. I'm looking right at you right now. Listen to me. Your wife's a good woman. She loves you. And you're a rock star, dude. The fact that you have this concern, that you're doing work that you can't stand right now, solely because you want to make sure that you've got the benefits to take care of your amazing wife man that makes you an absolute freaking stud but i hope you as you're watching this you see that the way out is still smart and it's still safe and you're not going to interrupt your benefits that would in somehow potentially harm you and your family because of your wife none of this revolves excuse me involves you leaving without a plan we execute on the plan and we walk from the social work that you can't wait to say goodbye to into technology work that you would love. And we just talked about how to do it. So you got this, man. But you can live your dream out and fulfill your mission and take care of your wife and family. And that's how you do it. So go do it. 844-747-2577. Joe, it just hit me. Madison, Nathan, it just hit me. I... I, I'm a, sl I'm, I, you know, I'm not the brightest guy in the world, right? I'm just a good listener, and and uh, and uh, I like to discern. And uh, but it occurs to me, if we got spouses calling in on behalf of uh, their their loved one, and uh, it occurs to me, just let them watch the call. That's what that's what YouTube is for. They don't have to call in. They're embarrassed or whatever. Fine, change their name, change the location. Madison will do that for you. If you're Sue from Orlando, you can call in and we'll call you Linda from Arkansas. We don't care. Make up a name. And if you and then I'll, I'll speak to your spouse on your behalf and let them watch it. That's that's the magic of this. We really don't care if it's your name or where you're from. We just want to help you. So there you go. I don't know why I haven't thought of that before. We get a lot of people that do this. It's like, oh, I'm calling on behalf of the husband. So I now you speak right to the husband. So there you go. 844-747-2577. They're making fun of me back there. I get it. I, I don't know why. I don't know why. You know, because I, you know what I really like? We've had a couple of these calls, Joe, where we've had the husband get on the phone. And dudes, I'm calling you out. Your wife is braver than you are. Uh oh. Well, it's true. We got, we got how many women have called this show on behalf of their husband? You, that's true. It's way more than the other way around. So, guys, if, you, if you're not comfortable, fine. Ladies, call and make them watch the call on YouTube. And I'm going to speak right to these dudes. 844-747-2577. Brainerd, Minnesota is where Reese is. Reese, you're on the Ken Coleman Show. Hey, Ken. How's it going? Reese, I'm living the dream. What's going on with you? Well, I'll say I'll try to keep it short here. Um, but basically, I'm 20 years old. Uh, I graduated high school a few years ago and then got my associate's in arts degree through the local college. And now I just find myself working and it's not necessarily something that I want to be doing, but I'm having a really tough time narrowing down what it is I need to be doing five years from now. All right. So let's talk about that. Have you ever wondered about something, even if you were in the eighth, ninth, 10th grade, maybe you were a nine or 10 year old and you've never truly explored it. What comes to mind when I ask you that? You know, not a whole lot, really. Mm. Um, I tried filling out the career clarity guide. Where'd and you get stuck? Well, it's easy for me to come up with some talents, but as far as passions go, I have a tough time just just narrowing it down, finding something. All right. So now when you say it's tough time narrowing it down, that implies that you've got a lot of answers or it implies that they're kind of ambiguous, meaning you can't get super descriptive. Which one is it? 
more so ambiguous. Tell me what you did write down. Tell me what you do think of when we talk about work uh, that well, you love, the idea of the work itself, the task, the function. You really love playing this role. What comes to mind? Well, I'm very goal oriented. So accomplishing a, a big goal is uh, very fulfilling for me. Uh huh. Give me an so example. Really Give me an example of a goal like that that you did that and you felt very fulfilled. Uh, it could be as simple as like a home project. If I was working on maybe um, a renovation or something, by the time I I got done, I could sit down and look at it and touch it and say I did that. Yeah, that was very fulfilling. Okay. Anything else that popped in your mind? under passion work that you love to do that you just love it you think about it you get juiced you're in the middle of it time disappears what else um maybe just talking with my friends and helping them out with their budgets and stuff interesting okay um that's good that's good what would you call that what 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 one word would you describe if i said what role are you playing when you're helping your buddies out with their money um Maybe an advisor. There we go. Very interesting. Anything else? Um, Under not, passion. Not really. Okay, now what did you write down for mission? Results of your work that matter deeply to you. The people you want to help. The problems you want to help solve for them. The, res the, the, the solutions to those problems. What did you come up with there? I, I couldn't come up with much for that. All right, well, the reason is because you've really struggled to define the work. So once right. you, all right, so now let's go to what you do best. You said you had no problem write down your talent. What'd you come up with? So I'm reliable, adaptable. I like solving problems. Um, I have a lot of attention to detail. It's easy for me to make big decisions. Uh, I don't have any tough time doing like risk assessment, looking into the future um, as far as a decision goes. Okay, good. Now let me tell you what I heard. I'm going to spit it back to you. You're reliable, adaptable, good with details. You have, you're decisive, and you're also a bit of a futurist. Did I get that right? Yeah. Well, and one thing you said in there that I didn't just include, because it almost takes me getting you to talk about what you're good at to hear a little bit of passion, and you said, I like solving problems. That doesn't belong on the talent list unless you say, I'm good at problem solving. Are you good at problem solving? Yes. There we go. But guess what? You like solving problems. So now this is the fun part. What problems do you most get excited about solving? Oh, gosh, I don't know. Yeah, you do. Yeah, you do. You just uh, said it. You gave me two earlier under passion. Work you love to do. You like fixing things, right? Uh, or, or maybe we say creating things. So that's either you liked renovating a bathroom or a kitchen or fixing a patio door. Those are your words. I'm just putting in some details. Am I right? Right. But you also love advising your friends on money. So if I say to you, tomorrow I'm going to give you a grand adventure, Reese. And here's how it works. You're guaranteed to be successful. Don't have to commit to it for more than five, six months. It's just a fun work adventure, but you're going to be good at it. Can't fail. And we look at the, the, the information you've given me so far, and we go, all right, you get to pick. What work are you doing? What problem are you solving? Who are you helping with the work? What do you say? What do you try tomorrow? What do you do? Uh, I think I might start by helping people out with their personal finances why why'd you pick that well i just think that a lot of people these days are strapped down and don't understand what they should be doing with their money and they need the help yeah let me tell you why i think it is that's all true what you just said but i think it's because you are really good at details I think you're really good at adapting to scenarios that come your way. So when you're counseling people on money or their retirement, they're investing. You can look at their situation and adapt, get the details, put a pattern together, make a decision that gives them a better future. And ultimately, you're solving their financial problems. That's why I think you chose it. Does that sound right to you? That sounds pretty close, yeah. Yeah, why'd you chuckle? Canada's had a realization there. Yeah, you did. 
Now, let me ask you. So I teach that you use what you do best, your talent, to perform your passion. This is work that you love to do. To then produce a result that matters deeply to you, that's mission. Talent plus passion plus mission. That's where you find that role you're supposed to play, the role of advisor. And if you're playing the role of advisor every day in the workplace, you're in your sweet spot. People look at you and go, Reese, you were born for this. So I'm asking you, is financial advisor just one of the jobs that allows you to fill that unique role and be in your sweet spot? Probably not. There, I mean, there probably probably are a few different careers out there once I dug down deeper. Right, but you, you answer the question wrong. The answer is yes, financial advisor is one of the jobs. Right. Well, why'd you say no, it wasn't? I guess it's just really hard for me to make a decision for myself versus other people. Yeah, but my point is, is I'm just giving you one option and we're looking at talent, passion, mission. That's the what you okay. grade this on. And so you got confused. I think the way I asked the question confused you. Bottom line is financial advisor is just one of the things that you could do that keeps you in that right. unique role, right? Right. Just one of them. Yep. All right then. So uh, somehow I confuse you for the moment. Are you clear now? Oh, that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. So now here's the deal. What do you do with this phone call? What you need to do is, is start doing some more digging into the field itself. Talk to people. Go to DaveRamsey.com. Find a smart investor pro or two or three in your area and call them up. Say, hey, I'm a Ken Coleman show, Dave Ramsey show guy, and I think I might want to get into this field. Love to learn more about what it takes to get qualified, what a day-to-day -day looks like. Find somebody who uses one of those people and see if they'll set up a phone call for you. Just say, hey, I'm a young okay. guy. Can I spend 15 minutes with you doing a little short interview? It's like doing a college research paper. You've done that. And you, now you're going right. to clarify and verify whether or not this is actually a top candidate. It might not. You might come away and go, you know what? I actually want to get into home renovations. And I'm going to advise people on the best way to add value to their house. I don't know which way you're going, but my point is it all comes back to, do I have the talent to do it? Do I enjoy the work? And does the work produce a result that I get fired up about? Make sense? Right. Yeah. So you're there, Reese. You're really close. You get a little bit more research to do to see all the different things that you could do to fill that role. All right? And then now we go, oh, now he can step into a sweet spot. 844-747-2577. Let's go to the chat window. Then we're going to do a little teaching on four questions that will help uncover your why. And we walk through a little bit of that uh, with Reese, but I'm going to give you some very specific questions that will help you. Uh, let's go to Corinne. She says, I'm starting grad school tomorrow. Any tips on how to use that time to set myself up for the dream job after school? Yeah. So any moment that you are not in the classroom or doing some work that you have to do to maybe pay the bills if you have to work, you are doing what I just told Reese to do. You are connecting with people that are in the field that you want to be in. Hey, I want to be you someday. Can I buy your coffee? Can we do a Zoom call? Can we do a phone call? Um, I, I'd love to just learn more about what you do day to day, how you got there. Uh, so you're, you're wanting to connect for the purposes of learning and the connection. Then if you can get some work in the field. So depending on what you're doing, in grad school, if you can even get an entry-level job in an office that is doing the work that you eventually want to do, that's wonderful because, again, you get the opportunity to do more connecting while you're learning and, oh, by the way, we're getting paid. So it's really all about the proximity principle. Get around people that are doing what you want to do. Get in places where that work is happening and good things are going to happen for you. You're learning, doing, and connecting. Uh, Rachel Lipker writes in, how do my husband and I decide on what a reasonable commute to work is? Currently, my drive to work is 60 minutes and his is 75. Well, the very nature of that question leads me to believe that we already feel like this isn't reasonable for much longer. Okay. But what you've got to do is, is you've got to look at the big picture. So what we say is we go, okay, we're driving. I'm driving 60 minutes. You're driving 75 every day to do this work. This work 
is producing a paycheck that is allowing us to not just be stable, but hopefully we are making our way towards a goal. What's the goal? Is it just the paycheck? Probably not. Is it getting experience so that you can move up in your career? Hopefully so. So now we say, how much longer can we do this? This is a having an effect on us. So how much longer do we think we can put up with this? That's the emotional question. Now we need to get practical. We have to replace these jobs for all of the reasons I mentioned just mo just moments ago. So how are we going to replace those? Where can we replace those and make our commute much better? So it's just tactically walking through what are all the things that need to happen for us to fix this problem? And your problem is the commute. It's not difficult, but just walk through this. Okay. Well, in order for me to do this work, stay in this place, there's only a couple places that are within 30 minutes or less of us. So I got to look at those and see what the opportunity is. So now I got to put all my guns and focus on that situation. You know, um, can I be flexible? Can I wait a little longer? All those things. You just got to walk through it. And um, if you do that, um, you'll come up with a plan. Chanelay writes in, Ken, what are your thoughts on multi-level marketing companies? I'm going to keep my thoughts to my own personal opinion. That's what you're asking anyway. They're not for me. Um, but I know a lot of people that have done very well in multi-level marketing. They're personally not for me. And I would say that if it's not something that you want to do for the rest of your life, and be actually the true business owner based on how that whole multi-level thing works, I wouldn't do it. I think there are certain people that are really cut out for it. Um, I think they've got the right personality blend, the right amount of discipline that make them rock stars in multi-level marketing. And they love it. They, It's less about the work, if I might say, and it's more about the freedom and the options that it gives you. And if that's the driver for you and you're uniquely qualified to do well in it, go for it. Outside of that, I, I just think it has so many barriers for people who aren't just naturally wired to be able to win in that space. It's not a politically correct statement, but that's my opinion. Great for some. Uh, for most, I don't think it's great. And I think the numbers bear that out. 844-747-2577. 844-747-2577. Okay. I'm going to go over this really quick because I'm constantly developing content and we're working on some stuff behind the scenes here to help you all continue to get clear. And, you know, Reese's phone call really reminded me of, of why we want to continue to dig and get methodologies that are helpful because of how easy they are for you to apply. And so I'm going to give you four questions that I think will start to help those of you who get stuck on what is my passion and the way we define passion here at the Ken Coleman Show is the work itself. Because all successful men and women have at least one thing in common and it's they actually love the work. So whether they're in coding or they're artists or they're teachers or they're business people, they love the work. The, the results of the work, obviously, big heart issue. That's why we focus on that. But they love the work. And, and, and in loving the work, of course, they're going to connect to the, the result of the work. But they really, really love the work. Whether they're, they're noticed for it or not, whether they're rich or famous, that's all a byproduct of the love. Okay which is why we use the word passion to describe the work you love. But a lot of people get hung up on this. Our, our, we have a wonderful little worksheet that just kind of a, the very basic process. It's called the uh, Career Clarity Guide, and that's what Reese was talking about. And he said he got hung up on the passion thing. So here are four questions that will start to help you see things, see evidence in your life. And believe me, the evidence is there. Sometimes we just struggle to see the evidence in our own lives. So here, here they are, four questions, all right? The first one is, do I like working with people? Just answer that. Do I like working with people? Second question, do I like working with things? 
third question is, do I enjoy being in the idea space? I like working with ideas. Fourth, do I like working with and in processes? Okay, so let me run through those. Essentially, you've got four areas, and they can all intersect. So let me give you an example. If you said, I really like working with people, yes, I I like doing jobs where they're very people-focused and people-oriented. And then you got to things, and you said, yeah, I really like working with things, but I like working with people too. Well, it's an example of how that would work. So give you an idea. So that could be the HVAC repairman, the mechanic. It's very people-oriented that people are coming with something very personal, very important to them. Their, their heat, their AC, their car, and there's an interaction there. So I enjoy interacting with people, but I really like working on things. That would be an example. Let's say that you said, uh, I really like working with people, but um, I'm, I'm really all about processes. So that could be a person that is an office manager, right? Could be an admin assistant. I like engaging with people, but I really like working on processes and working in processes. What about people and ideas? Now, that's where I fall. I really love developing content. Working in the ideas space, principles and truths and methodologies But I love, love, love doing it on behalf of people. So I'm all about working with ideas to serve people. You following along, Joe? Where do you think you fall on this? Have you thought about this? You're a process guy. And and Joe is and Joe's a things guy, right? Like he turning knobs and and editing. The guy's a whiz. He loves technology and production and all that. Uh, but he's also a process guy. He wants it to. He wa- he's all about making things run efficient, efficiently, and excellently. That drives you. Yes, it does. So that's why Joe produces a radio show, right? <laughs> yes. Are you tracking, Joe? It's Absolutely. making sense. Absolutely. Yes. So as you begin to walk through those four questions and you see the how they can come together, it's a starting process. Am I driven to work with people? Am I driven to work with things? In other words, do I enjoy working with people more or do I enjoy more when I'm working with things? Do I love engaging in ideas or do I love engaging in processes? Those are four really core questions that will begin to produce answers that you see as evidence. You go, oh. So play with that a little bit. We're developing some really killer stuff on this. So I'm giving, you know what the radio show does for me? The YouTube show allows me to just throw stuff out there it's like slap that up against the wall okay and so it'll really help you begin the process of asking the one when, when it comes to work because i've given you questions on the mission side i'll go ahead and teach that too because i'm on a roll right so when we ask the mission question what results matter to you i always say who are the people you most want to help what is the problem they have or the want that they have so so think challenge or desire And then you say, well, what are the solutions to their challenge or desire? Let me give you a further example. So if you want to help people that have technology problems, well, that's very clear, right? So I want to go in and fix people's home technology problems, or I want to fix technology problems for small business, whatever. Okay. Now that's a problem. They got a technology problem they need to fix. Or their HVAC goes out. You love coming in and saving the day. All right. Most important person in the Southeast every summer is the guy who fixes the AC. Believe me. All right. That's a big problem and you're helping them solve that problem. But it could also be on the desire side. I, you know what? I want to make women feel pretty. They desire to be pretty. So I'm a makeup artist or I design dresses or shoes or sell shoes, whatever it is. So when you begin to ask those questions on the mission side of things, you realize, oh, these are the results of my work. This is what drives my work are the results. But they work together, right? So as you begin to look at that, what do I like to do from a work? Just I like this work. That's where those four questions come in. Would I rather work with people or would I rather work with things? 
do I enjoy working in the ideas space or am I more in the processes kind of the space? I'm telling you folks, it'll reveal a lot. But you got to have the discipline to engage. By the way, when you answer those questions, go to some other people who know you really well and have them answer the same thing on your behalf. You wouldn't believe the amount of confidence that'll give you when everything matches up. So there you go. A little bit of a hack to help you all who are struggling with that passion question. Uh, that'll really help you. So dive into that. Let me know what you think and uh, call the show. We'll walk through it together. That's what's great about this. You get to call in and go, well, Ken, I answered these questions. Here's what I came up with. And let me see if I can help you put all the puzzle pieces on the table and then let's solve the puzzle. Well, gosh, I want to keep going. Well, I can't. But before I go, I want you to know you matter and you do have what it takes. Thank you so much for joining us. Until next time, this is the Ken Coleman Show. Press on.